Hey, it's Sam Crowley. I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. We're going to talk about some really cool, quick, not too long, marketing tips just to get you going, get you comfortable with being a marketer, show you how to build a brand, and uh, also be comfortable with who you are. Because look, it ain't no fun building a brand and building a business if you got to be a sellout. If you're going to do that, <laughs> might as well get a job, right? That's what jobs are for, to be a sellout, to be somebody that who you really are, just to please people, buying things you can't afford with money you don't have, to impress people that you don't even like. Welcome to my channel. Hey, also, become a subscriber. Bing! Be sure, hit that subscribe here button and you will be notified immediately. You're gonna be the very first person who's ever notified on the entire planet. All seven continents who subscribe to the Sam Crowley Show here on YouTube when I put out a new video. So if you like what you see so far, hit the subscribe button. And if you don't, hit the eject button. Hey friends. Let's talk about building a brand. Let's talk about being a marketer. Let's talk about being comfortable with who you are. Uh, the worst advice, the worst advice I was ever given was from an individual uh, who told me that I need to uh, be everything to everybody. Make sure you don't offend anybody. Because remember, Sam, you're a speaker. If you want to be hired to speak in as many places as possible and want as many customers as you can get, you got to make sure you don't offend anybody. Oh, my God. For reals? Come on, please. Uh, first of all, I don't ever want to speak to an organization where the message isn't congruent with what they're teaching. For example, let me give me a hypothetical. Let me share with you where I would not speak. I would not speak at the Human Resources Department for IBM, teaching them how to make sure that they tiptoe on the head of a needle and not to offend anybody and make sure that they check with their supervisor before they make a decision. If I were to go in and speak in that area to that audience, they would have security escorting me out the door in about four minutes, uh, right after I said, hello, your job sucks. Um, that would be the end of the speech. So I think the reason this came out is, uh, another reason is um, how this whole conversation came about a while back. I used the word jackass on a podcast describing, I don't know, probably my boss. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who it was. Um, yeah. So, and I received a letter back from a, a very nice lady. I mean, we have a half a million podcast subscribers. I mean, it's like five, zero, zero, comma, zero, zero, zero subscribers to the show. Half a million all around the world. By the way, I know you're one of them, so thank you so much. And if you're not, uh, samcrowleyshow.com. Boop, boop. SamCrowleyShow.com. Cheap plug, but you got to subscribe. It's the number one podcast on the planet in the motivational sphere. So I use the word jackass, and I get an email back from a lady who says, I don't appreciate you using that type of language. Um, I'm a Christian. <laughs> Can you imagine? As if Christians already don't have enough against them, you know, uh, being hypocrites. You're doing one thing, saying one thing, and doing another. That's a, that's a story for another day. Hey, I have nothing against anybody's religion per se, but geez, I don't think I've ever been judged as much as I have by the Christian community. Um, so anyway, I, I kindly replied and gently replied, okay, and said, look, ma'am, um, I just used, it's just a word. I mean, it, it was just a word. It was an, an adjective or was it a noun? It was a noun. And uh, sorry you're offended. It's kind of who I am. So here's my point. If you're offended by the word jackass, you're probably not somebody that's going to show up at one of my live events. It's not that I drop F-bombs all the time. I very rarely swear, especially when I'm recording it. I don't swear. Um, but if I do, please don't be offended. It's just a word. I can't control the meaning you give to the word and how it resonates with you. Just maybe. But I actually meant to say that word. It's not like I tried to avoid it. So I don't want to be a sellout. Like in the corporate world, if I were still in my job, perfect example. This is a great um, it was Christmas time, early part of the decade, 2002, 2003, whatever. I was running the uh, sales, sales department. And we were giving out our end of the calendar year. So it was right before everybody left for Christmas. And we were giving out sales awards. And we had um, brought up different sales reps and recognized their percent of a percent of quota so far. So about 100%, 200%, 300%. <laughs> well, moi forgot to put on a PowerPoint slide the actual percent of objective that this individual, as a female, was at. 
middle-aged female too, not somebody that was like 17 years old, okay? Probably in her mid-40s. And so it had her name and it, and it recognized picture, you know, starburst, woo, you know, congratulations. Forgot to put the percent of quota. You know, I say, hey, brought her up, congratulations, gave her a plaque, whatever, we gave her a gift card for the holidays. And there was probably 20, 25 people. And as in charge of the sales department, I was in charge of this whole presentation. So out of 20 some sales reps and putting this whole, you know, thing together for an afternoon and we catered in food, I mean, it was great. Feel good, happy holidays, Andy Williams playing in the background. And then we come back January after the first of the year and my boss calls me in. He says, hey man, um, I know this isn't gonna, he already knew me, so he knew I would just explode, but I know this isn't gonna sit real well with you, but, um, you know, you, you got to have a conversation and actually apologize to, we'll just call her Susie. Say her name. I don't want to embarrass her. Like, why do I have to apologize to Susie? Um, he goes, well, remember that, you know, little shindig you put together? I go, oh yeah, the one I stayed up till 11 o'clock the night before, putting the entire PowerPoint together, catering the food, Andy Williams, Bing Crosby playing it. That one? I remember that one. I didn't see my kids or the, my wife at all for three days prior because I was working my ass off. That one? Yeah. You left off her percent of objective. Like, what'd you say? You remember the slide? I go, yeah, I remember every slide. Did I forget to put the percent of objective? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Okay. And I'm, I'm apologizing for for what? Because we had a party afterwards, went on until like 10 at night. You mean all that stuff I put together? Yeah, she said that it ruined her entire Christmas and she stayed in her room for three days. She said she stayed in her room for three days, Sam. I was staring at him like he told me, Sam, your father is a unicorn and your mother a gorilla and they live in the Amazon jungle, and you need to go meet them right now. I mean, that's the type of conversation I thought I was in. So I fell on the sword for the company, sold out again, brought in Susie. I apologize. Oh, it's okay. I'm thinking, oh my God, I've been reduced to just an insecure bundle of fluff. I have no, I have no authority. I have no decision-making ability whatsoever. I'm a lemming. I'm a robot. I'm void of any. Now, literally, I was starting to question if you even cut me, would I bleed? I think I've just turned into just this giant lump of steel. It was right around those times. You can imagine how that conversation, how, how, I, how, that, res how that resonated with me for the next few days. So when I finally told the boss to shove it the first time, and then, of course, went broke, went back and told the boss to shove it, a second time. I made the commitment I would never sell out. If you don't accept my brand and my teachings and the speaking and whatever it is I'm marketing, that's okay. I mean, we don't need to. I mean, it's not personal. It's just who I am. You could be a very successful individual if you eliminated 99% of the market and just spoke to 1%. I mean, there's a lot of people with internet access. Okay? You have a big market out there. This is for online marketers. So, Here's where I'm going with this, okay? It took me nine minutes to get to the point, but nonetheless, I'm getting to the point. I see so many people out there trying to copy the language and trying to copy the, uh, the you know, the vernacular, big word for me, college dropout, 20 college credits, most of them gym and health class, wouldn't transfer to even a community college, but vernacular is a big word for me. They're trying to copy the brand of somebody else. Look, be yourself. People will gravitate towards you. The more real you are, the more followers and the more business you're going to do, okay? Um, if you got to create an ebook, create an ebook with your own words. Don't buy some PLR piece of crap out there and put it in your autoresponder. And if you don't know what an autoresponder is, that's okay too. Just Google it and learn what one is. But if you're going to have follow-up messages going to your list, make sure it's your message. Create them yourselves. Don't. There's there, there's there's a lot of benefit to plug and play. If somebody creates an autoresponder series for you. That's great. Put it in, but gradually pluck them out one by one, maybe over the course, do one a week. After 10 weeks, you've got your own 10 email follow-up series and make it your words. You know, do you know what the number one entrepreneurial book of 2013 is? 
Hello? Okay. These are my words, okay? I worked with a writer on this because my kryptonite is sitting down to type. I know what my limitations are. It's, it's you know, sitting down and getting something like this. 300, I don't know, what is it? 333 pages of killer content that's going to change your life. This is something. Oh, by the way, cheek plug, all right? But since this is my video, my channel, would you like a free chapter? Go to nomoreworkdays.com. That's nomoreworkdays.com and download your free chapter. But you know what? I didn't have a ghostwriter write that book. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, a lot of books out there, nobody's even seen them until they go to print. The famous quote was Charles Barkley, who wrote his book of, of NBA Hall of Famer, says that was misquoted. Misquoted in your own book. Imagine that. I'm not saying there can't be errors. There's errors in every book. Go to Barnes & Noble, you'll find a typo, a run-on sentence, or an error. That's okay, and I'll miss it. But to say you're misquoted in your own book, that's a trick. But here's the point. If you're going to put a book out, you're going to put audios out, you're going to put a video out, make sure it's what, how you really feel and what your real thoughts are. And if it happens to offend people, great. Long time ago, I learned this when I was managing people. All right, Susie's a perfect example. 20% of the people are going to love you no matter what. I mean, they you you can walk on water. You, 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 you could literally say, I don't like you, and they'd be like, I love you. Okay. Then there's 20% of the people who are going to hate you. Oh, nobody hates you. I don't have well, you have enemies. They just talk behind your back, okay? So, please. Um, maybe you don't have as many as I have, or somebody else has, or, you know, Howard Stern has, but you got enemies, okay? So 20% of the people are not going to... This is when you're managing people. This is... Uh, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me preface my comment. This is when you actually step out to be great, okay? This isn't playing small, okay? If you're going to a little cubicle every day and eating your lunch out of a piece of Tupperware and, and never trying to be great, and you actually hate that lifestyle. Those of you that love it, we need you, all right? We need you, all right? You are a value to the workforce. We need you. I'm talking about the person, this job sucks, I'm eating leftovers. Hey, you know what? You're eating leftovers because that's, 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 that's the decision you made. It's a decision you made. Nobody made that decision. Nobody said, I'm going to force you to live a life of eating leftovers. Okay? However, getting back to the lesson at hand, which I'm so far off the reservation talking about eating out of a Tupperware with, uh, I'm going to try to get this thing back on track. Oh, 20% of the people, they're going to hate you no matter what. When you try to step out and be great, okay? When you play small, I don't know, maybe I don't have any enemies, but your biggest enemy is going to be you. Good is the enemy of great. Bah, great book. Read it. Good to great. Good is the enemy of great. Boom. And then you've got, so you got 20%, 20%. Now you got 60% who you could influence one way or the other, all right? Depending on how unique you are. How unique you are. People want fresh. People want authenticity. People want someone who's unique. People don't want a recorder. People don't want somebody that's going to regurgitate a message that Seth Godin wrote or Bill Gates wrote or Jack Welch or Oprah Winfrey or you name it, Maya Angelou. I mean, look, if I want that, I'll just go buy Maya Angelou's book. I want you. So if you're building a business, the business has to be have your brand. It has to have you inside it. Cheap plug for the number one entrepreneurial book of 2013. This is me. No more workdays.com free chapter. Okay? That's me, who I am. You don't like it? Great. You like it? Great. And if you're one of that 60% that somehow got influence, even better. I'm building relationships every day. You know what's funny? In my neighborhood, where I live, I don't think I have any friends. My wife would vouch you to come right in the room right now and vouch for me. Nobody even knows what I do. Half the people I'm sure think I'm, uh, I'm a trust fund baby. You know, because I'm out grilling at noon in my driveway with my dogs throwing a tennis ball every day. Most people get home at 8 o'clock. Speeding down our cul-de-sac because i got to get home for late, late for dinner. Uh, others may think I'm a, uh, a polished-looking drug dealer. Others may think I'm living off the system. Don't even get me started about our political system. Some may think I'm one of these, like, scammy uh, food stamp guys or, you know, uh, trying to work the system on some sort of... Uh, fake disability. Uh, I think I have enough disabilities to qualify though. That's the funny thing. Um, and others may just think I'm completely out of my mind, which that is the closest thing. The point being, I am who I am. I'll put together products and I just love what I do. 
Uh, but I don't do it all the time. It's not like I shoot 800 videos a day. I shoot a video when I think I got a message to deliver. And uh, somebody's going to comment on this video and they may put a negative comment. That's cool. Most are going to be positive. Yes. Uh, the point being, if I happen to use the word jackass, I'm not saying it to uh, garner any type of, uh, you know, I'm not doing it for the wow factor. Shock and awe. I'm doing it because if you were to buy me a Guinness down at Paxton's here in Loveland, and we started shooting the breeze, I'd probably use the word jackass in a conversation. And I hopefully would not offend you. And if I do offend you, you're not part of my target market. Okay? Susie got offended because she gave so much meaning, so much meaning, to her percent to quota that that defined who she was. That literally robbed her of her self-esteem. It ruined her Christmas. Think about how shallow her life is, that she's defined by a set of numbers on a PowerPoint slide out of an entire 12-hour day. I mean, you could recognize me in front of a group of people and call me Sam Crosby, all right? I'm not going to be offended because I don't give meaning to that, and it's a mistake somebody made. But the I would be offended. You want to really offend me? Call me average. Mm, I would fight to the death somebody that I am not average. Call me a sellout. You could have called me a sellout for 15 years between the years of 1990 to 2005. And everybody I left behind on the corporate battlefield is a complete and utter sellout. They are not unique. They offer absolutely no authenticity to the professional landscape whatsoever. They're following the lemmings right off the cliff. Don't be that person. The next piece of thing, hey, how about the next piece of literature you put out, make it yours. Instead of cheap plug, number one entrepreneur book 2015, you don't need to put a book out this big. Put out an ebook. Get out of, get a 50 page ebook. Get a 10 page ebook. You know, the first ebook I ever created was 10 pages called You Are a Champion. I wrote it at three o'clock in the morning before I went to work one day. Used openoffice.org and open source, open source software. This was back in 2005. I mean, heck, you could go to Fiverr and get it done for five bucks. Made it into a PDF, uploaded it, and boom, gave it away. $97 value. Yours free when you enter your name and email on everydayissaturday.com. I love marketing. I love it because you get to be who you are. 20% love you, 20% hate you. It's that 60% you're out there influencing, baby, and they're going to be more influenced in a positive manner if you are who you are. If you are authentic, don't be a sellout. Don't be a copycat. You know, it was a great Les Brown told me one time, he said, Sam, I said, Les, he said, Sam, you know, most people are born original. As a matter of fact, everybody, you got to be hungry. Oh, I love Les Brown. Getting back. I just injected like 15 Les Brownisms, okay? He said, Sam, I said, Les, he said, Sam, everybody's born an original. But unfortunately, most people die a copy. Don't die a copy. I think I'll leave you with that. Follow me on Twitter, at Sam Crowley. Follow me on Twitter, at Sam Crowley. And let's communicate and let me know how this video resonated with you. And if you put, don't die a copy, and send it to at Sam Crowley, I know you saw this video. Or leave a comment right here on the channel. But make sure, bing, you subscribe. To the number one motivational channel on the internets all over the world wide webs, from Antarctica to Iceland, from Asia to Cincinnati. My name is Sam Crowley, founder of EverydaySaturday.com. Have the best day ever. You are a champion. Daddy, this is tomorrow Saturday. It's tomorrow Saturday. Because she wanted All the to time. spend the day with you, right? It's the only day we saw each other. I was a stressed out corporate slave. I never saw my family, John. John, it's taking, it's taking, it's taking, it's taking, he said take it!